Alrighty, welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what I think is one of the best base designs for a beginner player in Rust. And because Rust on console is fairly new to the scene, this video is designed at Rust console players. However, as you can see, I am currently recording on the PC version of the game, only because it allows me to spawn in items that I need to show you guys this video. But it is exactly the same for everything I'm going to show you today for the Rust console edition. So let's get started. In my opinion, if you're running as a solo or a duo, this base is just a great design. It's easy to build, it's easy to maintain and upkeep, and it offers quite a, quite a decent amount of protection against raiders. So ideally, when you go to put this base down, you have enough that you can upgrade at least a, a two by two sort of base design. If you would prefer to not farm a bunch of resources before you start to put this base down, you can start it off as a one by one, as a single square. However, what you need to keep in mind is that you won't have an airlock if you start in this uh, manner. So I would always try and get at least enough that you can whack down a two by two and upgrade it to at least wood. But to get started, put down a one by one, and I prefer to use a double door here, mainly because later on you can upgrade it to a garage door, which offers a lot more protection than a sheet metal door. However, if you'd prefer, you can always just put down a, a single door in this area. And this can be wood. Don't worry about, you know, getting sheet metal to start off because that's not easy straight off the bat. So whack down a one by one with a sheet metal door or a, a double wooden door. Make sure you upgrade that all. and whack down your tool cupboard. So there's a few ways that you can do this. Personally, I like to put the tool cupboard standing in the back corner and putting it right into the corner there. You can see that it's, um, it's not as deep as it is wide. So putting it in this direction means that you can actually fit a large box in this corner here. Nice. And because, you know, you're starting off as a one by one here, it's important to have a furnace. So I would just whack down like a furnace in this corner. And you can also fit a small box next to that. And then you want to make sure that you have your uh, sleeping bag in this area. Okay. So keep in mind that if you have enough resources from the get go, then it's better off to, you know, put down the full two by two foundation. But if you're struggling and you don't really have enough to make a full base just yet, then you can just start off with the one by one. But as I mentioned, there is currently no airlock. So you are prone to door campers and you could potentially lose your entire base. So sometimes it is better just to get a few more resources before you put down a base, but I'll leave that up to you. So from here, we're gonna whack down a two by two with a single door on the front and another triangle foundation with another single door heading out to the right. And I'll talk about why that's important in a moment. But for now, you can upgrade all of this, put a roof on and upgrade the whole thing to stone. If you are planning on upgrading this base further vertically, you could always leave one of these front two ceilings as wood so that you can chop it out later. Or you could leave this triangle as wood so that you can use it as a chute. But we're not going to cover that today. The orientation of the ways that you put your front doors on is very important. I'd always recommend the outermost door to swing inwards and the innermost door to swing outwards. The reason for this being, as I'll show you in a moment, is that if you're running around and farming, say for example, and you start getting shot and you're trying to run back into your base, the last thing that you want is to have to open the door that swings out towards you, step backwards and then run in. Whereas here you can just step straight in. The reason that you want the inner door swinging outwards is that it acts as a barrier to players entering your base when both doors are open. Whereas you can see if this door were to swing the other direction, they can just purely run in if both doors are open. So that's how I would orientate the doors at the front of my base. Whack a few locks on there and you've got yourself a nice little stoned up 2x2 base with an airlock and currently three sheet metal doors to access your tool cupboard or a stone wall or stone roof. Which is, you know, not easy to raid, especially early on in the wipe. So from here, now that our base is a bit more secure, 
What we're going to do is set down a loot room. Provided that the 2x2 design is pretty compact, it's important to be efficient and try and store as much loot as you can in this small area. But personally, I feel like a 2x2 is really enough space for one or two players. If you get to the point where you start to snowball and get a bunch of loot, you could potentially think about expanding or even building a new base to suit your needs. But two by two for the most part, you can fit a lot of loot in. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. What you're gonna need is about six large boxes and a few small wooden boxes as well. So before you put any sort of door frame on this one by one foundation, what you wanna do is whack down four boxes. And if you place these as tightly snug into the, into the corner as you can, then you'll be able to fit four large boxes into one square foundation. Just like so. From here, it gets a little bit trickier. What you wanna do is exit your base and head around to the side where your loot room is. Put down a triangle foundation with a half wall and a triangle roof. Head, it doesn't need to be upgraded, you can leave that as twig for now. Head back into your base, and what, what that allows you to do is to build a triangle foundation inside your base. You can upgrade that, and from there, it doesn't matter, even if that twig foundation outside gets destroyed, this will stay there. So this is important to allow you to finish off this loot room. So this allows you to place another large wooden box right back into the corner here. And if you place that as snug as possible, then you can actually fit another large box in this orientation. And from there, you can put a small box at the front. Again, I would orientate it uh, lengthways so that it's easier to reach that back loot box. And there you have it. You've got six large boxes and a small box in this single one by one foundation. And I would always recommend Trying to get garage doors. And as you can see there, one potential problem that you might come into when trying to design this loot room setup is that you put it all down and for some reason your door or your roller door won't fit on. All that means is that you need to make the boxes down the bottom a little bit more snug. And one way to achieve that is by actually making this door frame into sheet metal because it takes up less room than a stone door frame and what that will allow you to do is to fit this box in the corner here nice and snug on the inside of that sheet metal door frame whereas it will clip further out from the wall if it is a stone door frame so you fit that in there and then this box will fit in here nicely and from there you will be able to uh, put your door on and off you motherfucker. So what you might need to do is, you know, there's no rush for this because your base is already secure. But what you might need to do is take these two boxes down the bottom off, put on your double sheet metal door or your garage door. And then after that, once you've upgraded the door frame to sheet metal, you can then fit these two boxes onto the inside here. And the door is on. Nice. Okay, so from here, what I would do is put a, another double door frame onto this middle section, upgrade that, and then once you do get enough resources, I would try and make sure that I have garage doors on all of these because they are much more durable and harder to raid through than sheet metal doors. Okay, so from here, you can put a tier one workbench into this back corner, which can later be replaced with a tier two workbench. The annoying thing on Rust console at the moment is that you can't actually use a hammer to pick up your workbenches, so the only way to get rid of them is to destroy them. And the tier 2 workbench is actually pretty durable, so unless you want to sit here with your teammates and you know spend 10-15 you know, minutes picking this out, it would probably take about 15, maybe 20 minutes to do this I think with a few people, then that's going to have to stay there. So that's kind of annoying, um, but you know, it is what it is. Having a tier two in that position won't obstruct your entry to the base at all. Just make sure it's nice and snug in the corner. 
Okay, so what I would do is because you can't remove that workbench, I would just place a few more small furnaces down around the place. So leave a gap in the back corner here for when you get your tier three workbench. And then you can put a little uh, box underneath that as well for a bit of extra storage. And then I would fill in the rest of this space here with small furnaces. So you've got yourself, you know, four small furnaces, you know, your tier two and tier three workbenches. You've got four, five, six, seven large boxes and three small boxes. So personally, I feel like that is plenty of storage space. There is more that you can do with this one by one foundation here in terms of storage. But I think given that this is a beginner's guide video, I think that most people are quite <laughs> preoccupied with just trying to survive and get a base down to start off with. So I don't want to make the initial base build too complex. And I think this serves the purpose quite nicely. And after that, all you really need to do to finish the inside of the base is to, you know, sparse it up a little bit. And from there, that is the inside aspect of the base complete. So let's head outside. So currently to raid this base, your enemies would have to get through, you know, if they're going through doors, they'd have to get through two sheet metal doors, an extra garage door to get to your tool cabinet, and an extra two garage doors to get to your loot room. Otherwise, if they have rockets, they could just rocket, you know, with four rockets straight through the top of the base here and open the entire thing up. So what I would do to start off with is to um, upgrade the top of the base. You can do this just by using half walls and, you know, filling that all in. which effectively doubles the raiding material needed to go through the roof. And by putting the, the little walls on the inside, it just means that it's harder to rocket raid because they it will be more difficult to raid uh, right in the center and give splash damage to all four sections of your roof. So I would always put that little uh, wall on the inside that separates the four uh, roof squares. Okay, so now it's time to honeycomb the outside of the base. Honeycombing purely serves the purpose of making more walls to raid between the outer side of your base and your loot rooms or your tool cupboard. And this base is really easy to honeycomb. All you need to do is place triangle foundations around the outside of your base. Like so. I'll just show you what it looks like from the top. So this is the floor plan that you should be looking at. And then from there, all you need to do is place your walls. Again, make sure that when you're placing walls that the correct side is facing inwards. So always have the rough side of the stone wall facing outwards, smooth side facing inwards. So that's what one section of honeycomb should look like. And there you have it. So that is a completely honeycombed uh, two by two base design that will keep you guys pretty safe. The last thing that I would do from here is to head back into the base and now that you're pretty secure, what you can do is as you start to get more and more resources, just make sure that you invest them into your base. So I would be looking at the inner two by two section of your base. Try and make the entire thing sheet metal. So as you get more resources, if you upgrade this whole thing to sheet metal, including the floors and the roof, having this as sheet metal is really helpful because it takes four rockets to raid through a stone wall. Whereas it takes eight rockets to raid through a sheet metal wall. And the best thing about this base design is that if you upgrade the entire inner portion to sheet metal, which it currently is, there is no way from the outer aspect of the base to realize that the inner side is sheet metal. 
So what this does is makes your base less of a raid target because if you're up upgrading your base to sheet metal or even to high quality metal, then people know that you have been playing quite a bit and have a lot of resources. So you're probably more likely to be a raid target. Whereas a nice little simple two x two design like this that is kept as stone on the outside really draws less attention and makes you less of a raid target. However, to access this base with explosives is actually quite expensive. And if you have the garage doors on the inside, then probably the cheapest way to get to your loot rooms is through your doors. And that's not cheap either. So there you have it guys. That's a pretty straightforward uh, beginner's base that will serve you well and keep you pretty safe out in the cruel world that is Rust on console. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you ask them in the comment section below. And if you have any other ideas or suggestions on videos that you'd like to see, then make sure you let me know also. And please keep in mind, this is a beginner's guide video. So I know there's a bunch of other tricks and base designs and loot room designs out there, but for you guys who are just getting started, on your journey with Rust on console. This one's for you, and I hope you found it helpful. But anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys real soon.